Ghost Rider's pretty cool, but he can't be real. Right? Guess what day it is? Well, okay, yeah, it's Monday, and we all know how I feel about those, but this is a different Monday. Today is Halloween, the day of the year when families get together to watch classics like The Wolfman, when spooky decorations are flying off shelves and being replaced by overly early Christmas decorations. It's Easter, and they already have the Christmas decorations up. You tell them, Sally. Anyway, I'm going to take a wild guess and say all of you know what we're going to be examining today. I mean, you saw the title of this video. For Halloween, we're taking a look at the all-new Ghost Rider from Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. First off, let's get ourselves a quick definition of this version of Ghost Rider. Who is he? How did he get his powers? Robbie Reyes started off in the comics and had a pretty different look and origin to the one we're given in the show. Although the same character, there are key differences regarding biological makeup. In the comics, Robbie Reyes looks more like some kind of zombie with a skull-themed motorcycle helmet that sprouts fire. Aside from actually looking like a zombie, this would be achieved by technology with relative ease. But no, 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 we're looking at his live-action version. On Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Robbie Reyes doesn't have this helmet or the zombie face. He's sporting the classic exposed skull, empty eye sockets, and fire that sprouts from his very bones. Yeah, that's pretty far-fetched, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, it is. In fact, similar to the video that a Stanford scientist did on the Hulk, this one involves a little bit of what I call imaginary biology. Or theoretical biology. They're kind of the same thing, really. So, let's make an analysis of how his powers might work and how his body handles the process. What happens when Robbie turns into the Ghost Rider? The first thing to happen is his skin, muscle, and basically everything above his skull on his head burns off. Yes, burns off. That's gotta hurt. Seriously, can you imagine just letting your face melt off? Ouch, Reyes, you're stoic. This process is pretty much the same as spontaneous human combustion, with a few tweaks here and there. Spontaneous human combustion is a phenomenon where a human will actually go up in flames for seemingly no reason. There have been recorded cases throughout history of spontaneous human combustion, many of which would leave certain body parts untouched by fire, and the environment around the body, including clothes, intact. Robbie Reyes almost perfectly matches these criteria. So, if he somehow possesses an on and off switch for spontaneous human combustion, how does the switch work? For that, we need to know how spontaneous human combustion works, and sadly, we really don't. Heck, it's debated whether or not the process is actually real, or simply a case of mistaken cause of death. There are a few theories that try to explain spontaneous human combustion, if it does exist. My favorite, personally, is that levels of natural alcohol in the body rise to a point where the heat of the body and the surrounding environment actually has enough of the natural alcohol to catch fire. See, the human body does actually produce alcohol naturally within itself. This alcohol is created during the digestive process, when the body needs to ferment some of what's being digested, which is what produces the natural alcohol. The issue is, those alcohol levels are really, really low. For comparison, 0.08% is the amount of alcohol you can legally have in your body while driving in most states. Even though beyond that it starts to mess with your body a bit, that's a considerably low level. Extracting all that out wouldn't result in much pure alcohol to burn. Compared to the legal limit, the human body only produces about 0.1 to 0.3 milligrams naturally. Can you imagine how small of a dose that is? It's small. So even though the body produces natural alcohol, I doubt it's enough to set the entire body on fire. But somehow, he does it. I can't think of any other biological reason Robbie should be able to do what he does. As a matter of fact, there are quite a few other things that match up with that. See how Ghost Rider's head is just a skull? It's not exactly debatable, that's a skull if I've ever seen one. On fire. But wait, there's a key feature here that we need to address. His jaw moves, and it's just a skull. There's no muscle present on the skull to support it, let alone let it move around like it does. It doesn't make any sense, the only way this could work is if a secondary system of veins and nerves were present in the bones. Speaking of which, since the head is just a skull, he shouldn't be able to move or live, period. The brain would have no passes to send messages to the rest of the body, at least not without the secondary system we mentioned. But no secondary system exists. Neither do his eyes. He can see. Without eyes. Everything about Robbie's powers is illogical. It can't work. It doesn't make any sense. So, what if he doesn't have powers? 
His origin hasn't been fully explored in the TV show yet, but so far, it looks like it's pretty much the same as his comic book origin. Robbie Reyes was turned into the Ghost Rider when he was killed by gunfire and brought back to life by a spirit of vengeance. Now he goes on rampage, killing those low enough to hurt others the way he was hurt. The whole idea of vengeance is pretty front and center with Robbie, but so is injury. Robbie died to become a Ghost Rider. Or did he? What if Robbie Reyes sustained his injuries, lived, but had a total mental breakdown? What if when Robbie transforms, it's just him seeing the Ghost Rider, while everyone else sees Robbie beating the snot out of a couple of guys? It would make a lot more sense, and could even be explained by his injuries. But there's something wrong. Robbie isn't the only one seeing himself as the Ghost Rider. Everyone else does too. Which can only mean Robbie really does turn into something. The Ghost Rider in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is real, and there's only one way to explain him. Like Robbie said, well, maybe you should leave it alone.